Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to start talking about infinite series. And for really the next two units in Calculus BC, we're going to be investigating series in, in quite a bit of depth. And I will say before I get started that I am presuming absolutely no prior experience with series, right? I'm not assuming you know a bunch of this stuff from your pre-calculus class, because I know that some pre-calculus classes include series and some don't. And now all good discussions about series start with a discussion of sequences. And a sequence is exactly what it sounds like. It's an ordered list of numbers, okay? But also it's a function that only takes in whole numbers, right? And so, you know, one example of a sequence that you're probably very familiar with is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. We've been familiar with this idea for quite a while in our math classes. But I just want to emphasize right now that sequences are not super important to us in AP Calculus outside the fact that that's what we put inside of a series. All right, so this is our definition of a series. And, you know, if you're already familiar with the large sigma operator, well, then good for you. But I'm just going like, to kind of label the anatomy of a series. All right, so when we've got that large sigma operator here, that means the sum of a bunch of things. We're going to add these things together, okay? This number here, or this thing here, this is n equals 1, this is telling us that we're starting with n equals 1, kind of like an integral. And then over here, this is where we're going to stop, also like an integral. And we're going to go until n is equal to p. Okay. And with these, with n, we are, this is called our index, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. n is our index, and I might take that and go out here and call that the index, okay? And then this a n, these are the things that we are adding together, these a values. So if, uh, you know, to put it back in to the counting by tens example, if we wanted to write this as a series, we would go over here and we would, well, we would start with our large sigma operator and we're going to say, all right, 10 and especially if we're using this formula, a n equals 10 n, this is going to start where n equals 1, and it goes all the way up to 60, so that's n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our series is going to start where n equals 1 and goes up to 6, and the things that we're adding together, our sum ands, are given by 10 times n. And that's how we would write that as a... Now in AP Calculus, in this class, we're generally interested in infinite series, uh, series that go all the way out to infinity, okay? Like all three of these, okay? And I'll have something to say about each of these. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say, I'm gonna work with the series on the left. And this is just general advice about working with series in all math classes. If you're ever working with a series and you're not sure what to do, a good first step is to start by just writing out some terms. So that's what I'm gonna do over here with the sum from n equals one to infinity of two times n. Okay, I'm going to say that this is equal to, we'll start with n equals 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and so on. And it's just going to keep going. Okay, I'm going to say that, well, I feel like this total has to go to infinity. This, this, oh, pardon me. Um, this is going to go to infinity, because... Not only is the total going to go to infinity, the actual numbers that I'm adding together are going to go to infinity as well, right? The bigger n gets, the bigger 2n gets. So I can just tell, because the actual terms that I'm adding are getting bigger, that this total doesn't even have a chance to be a finite value. So what I just showed you is really just a case of using the divergence test. Okay, and so the divergence test is a theorem that says if the limit of the terms of a series is not zero, then that series for sure diverges. And up above, I have a, kind of an English version of that, would be if the terms of a series aren't going to zero, the series itself doesn't have a chance to converge, right? If we think about what that would mean to converge, well, which we haven't even defined yet, but if our infinite series was going to add up to a finite number, the more terms I add, the closer I'm getting to that finite number, well, I got to get closer and closer to adding zero to my total. 
And I was thinking about proving that for you in this video, but I'm thinking I've got, you know, a couple of other things I want to talk about. And so I'm just going to record that as a separate video and tell you that I'll, I'm just going to put the link for it right up there. Okay, so you can click that if you're interested in why this is true. But let's just work an example. Let's move on here. Let's say that based on the divergence test, which of these series would maybe possibly converge? Okay, and so the divergence test, that can only tell us that a series for sure diverges. Okay, so let's just say, let's find some series where the limits of their terms are not zero. And let's start with A. Okay, and let's look at the limit of these terms. That the limit as n approached infinity of 2 to the n divided by n to the 3, we know how to deal with that. We know that 2 to the n grows much faster than n to the 3. And, you know, over time, if the numerator of a fraction is growing faster than the denominator, well, the fraction itself is going to get much larger, and that's going to have a limit of infinity. Infinity is not zero, so I'm going to say that this series for sure diverges. Okay. With B, that's going to be the same story, because if we take a number and we keep multiplying it by 1.05, it's just going to keep getting bigger, right? You multiply a number by 1.15, it gets bigger. It gets 5% bigger. So I'm going to say that this limit is equal to infinity, and this one also diverges because the limit is non-zero. Okay. This next one here, I've got the limit of the terms of C is the limit of 5n divided by 10n plus 3. Okay. As n gets bigger, 5n divided by 10n plus 3 gets closer and closer to 5 tenths. 5 tenths, well, that is a finite limit. That limit does exist. It's not equal to 0. Therefore, that series definitely diverges. And then the last example I got for you, and I think I'm going to need a little more room here. I'm going to say... All right, I'm going to consider the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of n divided by n to the 2 plus 1. And we know that log of n grows slower than any polynomial in n, or any power of n. So I know that n squared plus 1 is faster growing, and faster growing in the denominator eventually gets a lower quotient to the point where it's going to 0. So based on that, because the limit of the terms is 0, I can say that series D possibly converges. Okay. And that's not going to be a guarantee that it converges. And we'll see all sorts of uh, tests that we can use to say for sure that a, a series converges. I'm realizing I haven't defined convergence for you. So for a, an infinite series, I'm talking about this series right there. For an infinite series, the kth partial sum is the total I get after I add up the first k terms. Okay. So the actual definition of convergence is if the limit of the partial sums is was existing, then we would say that the total converged. But I think it'll be easier for me to actually show you a situation where we've got a convergent series. And so I'm going to jump over there now. Okay, back to this list of three. Okay, the one on the far right, that one's going to be a convergent series. I, I'm just going to tell you. And the way I'm going to try to convince you of this is I'm going to say, you know, suppose you had a recent birthday, right? And y'all had a cake when you were celebrating. Maybe your parents there were there. Maybe you had your friends. I don't know. Maybe your whole family was there. Had a bunch of people there. And your cake was a rectangle, right? No loss of generality there. Just make it easier for me to draw this picture. Okay, suppose on the day of your birthday, at, you had a party and there were a bunch of people there and y'all ate half the cake, right? So that half is gone, okay? And then the next day, you know, maybe you didn't have your friends over, but your parents were still around or you still had family around and, and y'all still wanted to eat cake because it was good and y'all ate half of what was left. But then after two days, you know, probably your family's over it, um, but you want to keep the celebration going, right? And the cake was really good. So you're just going to keep eating half of what is left forever, right? And the more days that go by, you can see, I'm not really able to draw very well on this, but the more days that go by, the closer we're getting to having eaten one total cake. And if we looked at the partial sums, right, 
S1 would be the amount of cake af eaten after one day. That's a half. And I'm going to start, actually, I, I'm not going to be able to do that because I don't know all these fractions in decimal form. S2, we had a half and we ate another quarter, so that was three fours. S3 equals, uh, it's going to be seven eighths. S4 is going to be 15 sixteenths, right? And that's, hey, I should do a running total. Okay, so that's S1. S2 is both of these. S3 is all three of them. S4 there. S5 is going to be, it's going to be 31 over 32. S6, okay, and we're getting to the point where my highlighter is not going to get the job done. S6 is going to be 63 over 64. And so Sn is equal to 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. And the limit of that sequence is going to be 1. And that's why the series 1 half to the n converges to 1. Now I'm going to show you another reason why that series converges to 1 here in a second. And before I go there, I'm going to go back to this, to the definition of convergence, and kind of just make sure that you understand what I'm saying over here, kind of lower, that in this unit, in the 11th unit of my calculus class, where we're studying series of constants, we are not as concerned with the value the series converges to as much as we're concerned with whether or not the series converges at all. And over here, I'm realizing I didn't say anything about the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Okay, this is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, 1 over 4, and so on. Okay, I'm not going to really tell you a whole lot about this series today, um, besides to tell you that this is the harmonic series. That's uh, kind of terminology we need to know. And I'm going to be showing, telling, talking to you a lot about this one next time, and maybe even, you know, yeah, throughout this whole year, we're going to talk about the harmonic series. And I'll tell you right now, the harmonic series diverges, okay, despite the fact that its terms go to zero. Okay, so terms going to zero, like I told you before, that does not guarantee convergence, that just means it could potentially converge. Okay, and I'm just going to tell you right now, this one also diverges to infinity. I want to tell you about geometric series. Okay, we've already looked at the geometric series, or two of them so far. One half to the n and 1.05 to the n are both geometric series. And geometric series is just a series that has terms with a common ratio. Okay, so we saw that, you know, in the one half to the n example, each term was half of the previous one. And 1.05 to the n, well, if you just take a number and you keep multiplying it by 1.05, it'll just keep getting 5% larger. So let's just go over here and let's write 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54 and so on as a geometric series. Right? We're going to write a series so we know it's going to start with that large sigma. Uh, we can say that, actually maybe I'll just say, all right, it starts at 2 and each time I multiply by 3. So it's going to be 2 times 3 to the nth power. Okay? And I got to figure out what my first term is, or like what the index of my first term is. But since I've got that dot, 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 I know I'm going to be adding up to infinity. Okay. So what I need to multiply 2 by 1 to get a first term of 2. Okay. And 1 is 3 to the 0 power. So I could say n equals 0 up to infinity of 2 times 3 to the n. Or... I could say the sum from n, n equals 1 to infinity of 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. That would be the exact same series. It would just be written a slightly different way. And you're probably already seeing this, just looking at it. But I'm going to tell you again, this is a, definitely going to be a divergent series. This series diverges... Well, specifically because of the divergence test, because the limit of the terms, the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 times 3 to the n is equal to infinity. And that's because that limit is not 0, that's enough to guarantee us that this series is divergent. The geometric series test will tell us with certainty whether or not a geometric series converges. Okay? And the theorem is the geometric series 
the sum of some number times r to the n converges if and only if the absolute value of r is less than 1. I've copied the proof below, but you know, in the interest of time, I'm not going to really talk about it all that much. You can look at it, you can pause, think about it. Uh, I might re-record this as a separate video, and you know, if I do, I'll put the you know, kind of right up there. But I think what I need to really point out for you is, okay, first of all, uh, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, this converges if and only if the absolute value of r is less than 1. Okay? Absolute value of r is less than 1 means that r is between negative 1 and 1. Okay? Also, r is that number that I'm taking to the n. r is that common ratio that makes it a geometric series in the first place. And if it does converge, we have a formula for the sum, right? That's right down here. It's here. But I don't really like writing it that way as much, okay? What you'll see me do when I'm working these problems is I say the sum is equal to the first term, right? Because we don't always know what the index of the first term is. And frequently, especially for AP calculus, the first term is a fraction. And I want you to avoid fraction arithmetic errors. Because if you just put, you know, so you'll see some people put a over 1 minus r. If r is a fraction, which it needs to be in order to converge, and a is a fraction, you're going to have a bunch of layers of fraction. That's where arithmetic errors occur. So we don't want to do that. So I always say first term times 1 over 1 minus r. And I think you should, too. All right, so let's work an example. Okay, this one came from the 1997 BC exam. It was from the multiple choice section. I didn't bother to copy the multiple choices because I, we can just take it all the way. We can figure out an answer for ourselves. So the first step is going to be, okay, if they want you to find the value that a series converges to at this point in the course and really later, um, it's probably going to be a geometric series. Okay, That's one of the only ones that we have a formula for. Okay, And it's the only one we have a formula for in this unit. So if I want to find the value of it, I know it's got to be geometric, but I need to figure out what that ratio is. So I think what happened on top, right? I don't know. I don't just look at 3 halves and 9 sixteenths and know like, oh, I know what I multiplied by there. Let's just look at the top, right? Each time I'm multiplying by 3. And on bottom, each time I'm multiplying by 8. Okay? I know that those are both times 8. And you know, I think I'm just going to take it on faith that this is times 8 as well. Right. You can verify that for yourself if you want. That 1,024 divided by 128 is equal to 8. Okay. So I know that the first term here that's equal to 3 divided by 2. And then that common ratio is equal to 3 divided by 8. Okay. Okay. Since the absolute value of R is less than 1, I know the series converges. And not only do I know that the series converges, I know it converges to S equals first term, which was 3 divided by 2, times 1 over 1 minus that common ratio. Okay. So that's 3 halves multiplied by 1 over 1 minus 3 eighths is 5 eighths. Okay. And 1 over 5 eighths, that's 8 fifths, right? So that's 3 halves times 8 fifths. And at this point, I would call that 24 divided by 10, so that if the answer choices were decimal numbers, I'd be looking for 2.4. And if they were simplified fractions, well, I can reduce that. That's going to be 12 divided by 5. And, you know, I'd be ready to go. I'd be able to recognize any form of the correct answer. But in a free response setting, I know that I would be safe to stop right there, right? A number that's equivalent to the right answer. Now, before I let you go, I want to just right now, at the very beginning of this unit, introduce you to the idea of a power series. Now, a power series, I think your definition of a power series is going to be a power series is a series that's got x's in it, okay, x. Okay, and we're going to, especially as we move forward in this unit and towards the next unit, we're going to be really interested in power series in this class. Okay, and you can look at them as just like an infinite degree polynomial as well. And we'll be interested in power series when they converge, um, you know, what happens at the endpoints of the intervals of convergence, all that stuff. Uh, but for now, we're just going to ask what values of x make that series converge? And 
something I'll point out that we haven't had to deal with is what do you do if we've got here to the nth power, but here to the n plus first power? Like, what's going on? Okay, and like I told you earlier, if you're ever unsure, just start by writing out some terms. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in here. We're going to say, all right, this series is equal to when n equals 0, x plus 1 to the 0 is 1, divided by 3 to the 0 plus 1. Okay, plus... Okay, x plus 1 when n equals 1, that's x plus 1 to the first, divided by 3 to the second. Okay, then when n equals 2, I'll have x plus 1 to the 2, divided by 3 to the 3. And so on, because I think we've written out enough terms to see the pattern. On top, I'm multiplying by x plus 1 each time. And on bottom, I'm multiplying by 3. So really what's happening when we have that kind of offset in our index here and there is it's really just impacting the first term. It's not impacting the ratio. Okay. Or what's happening with its convergence or divergence behavior. Okay. So I'm going to say that this is a geometric series. With common ratio given by x plus 1 divided by 3. Okay. We know this converges if and only if the absolute value of r is less than 1. So I just need now to solve that x plus 1 divided by 3's absolute value is less than 1 inequality. Okay. So the first step here is going to be saying, all right, if the absolute value of a thing is less than 1, then that thing needs to be between negative 1 and 1, right? Then I'm going to multiply all three sides of this inequality by 3. Okay, and that's legal, right? We can multiply both sides of an inequality by a number, and if we have kind of nested inequalities, we can multiply all three sides by, that, by a number. Now, if we multiply all three sides of an inequality or both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we need to be careful. We need to remember that that reverses the direction of our inequality. But that's not going to happen in this example. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3. And I'm going to subtract 1 from all three sides. And, well, there it is. I'll have an interval of values that will make the series converge. And that's all i got to tell you in this video. So at this point, I think you need to go uh, do your practice problems. Make sure you know the formula for the, the total of a convergent geometric series. And come back next time and be ready to learn a whole lot more about series. But that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching.